All right, everyone, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, I'm Amelia Sternberg and I work at the Swedish cycling advocacy organization, Cykelfremjandet, based out of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and I'm part of the HEAT project team. And uh, the HEAT project is about participatory urban planning for healthier urban communities. And to further explore uh, the themes of the project, we are hosting this webinar, this last webinar of the HEAT project on diverse perspectives in cycle planning with an especial focus on the perspectives of children, seniors and users of modified bicycles, such as e-arm cycles, for example. And uh, joining us today to speak, uh, we have Johan Heifelman of Trafik i Bönhöjde in Denmark. who will be talking about students as ex traffic experts based on their experience working with uh, over 120 schools on user-based innovation to get kids biking and walking to school. Uh, we also have Silja Ingobese from uh, Valonia, a center for sustainable development and energy in Southwest Finland uh, joining us. And she'll be telling us about her work within the Green Silver Age Mobility Project um, and their participatory methods to get seniors on bikes, especially focused on a trial for seniors using city bikes. And we will also have Björn Billung, uh, an e-arm cycle advocate based out of Stockholm, Sweden, uh, who has been working for better roads for all traffic users for many years. And he will be talking about inclusive planning and policy for modified uh, bike users for us. And just to let you know, before we get going fully properly, uh, we are recording this webinar and the webinar presentations and the video will also be available on our website, uh, heatproject.eu after the webinar. And uh, we will of course send it out to, uh, to all of you who maybe aren't able to participate in the whole webinar. And just before I, uh, I let Johan begin his presentation, Johan, you have a question via Mentimeter for our participants. We'll be doing some Mentimeter throughout. So I'd like to ask everybody to get their phones out or open up another tab on their computer, type in menti.com. And you have the code here 900357. So 900357. Uh, and we'll see if you can start filling out the first question there, which is, I hope you can all see this. Johan, can you nod if you see the screen correctly also? And, and we are, the question is, which individuals or groups have the most influence on younger students' transport modes? You can pick up to three options. Can you now? Yes. So, Johan, uh, what are the options here? We have parents, uh, students themselves, uh, other students, um, traffic planners uh, or engineers, teachers, head of school, and uh, a communication officer. Okay. So we'll give our participants uh, a chance to uh, to fill this out. We have a lot of answers rolling in here. Uh, it's looking like there's quite a few circles going towards parents. Um, for me, it looks like a majority, I would say, so far here. Um, quite a few going to other students, teachers themselves. Um, very few people seem to think that communications officers have a, a very big influence. Uh, what do you think about these results? Are they surprising or kind of what you expected? Uh, I expected parents, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but, um, well, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually how we started working with the um, involving students because we know that parents are very much uh, the key. Uh, but our uh, idea was to uh, to influence parents by uh, by students uh, selling their parents in the car or at the table uh, eating breakfast that they like to uh, to change behavior somehow. So that's uh, what I expected. But uh, well, of course, the other uh, uh, groups or individuals are uh, important. But I think parents are the most important. I like very much that the, 
uh, a lot of uh, you guys have put the student themselves or other students uh, as a very uh, um, well influential uh, part of it. All right. Yeah. And I think you'll be giving us some more insights into this question, perhaps, uh, during your presentation. So please uh, sure. go ahead, Johan. The screen is yours. Just a second. You see the full screen? Perfect. Yes. Well, my name is uh, Johan Heikelmann and uh, I run a social enterprise called uh, yeah, Traffic i um, Social enterprise is uh, a non-profit organization uh, with a, a social purpose. I have uh, education as a teacher and after that a uh, master of uh, social science in, uh, on basis of uh, geography. Um, well, my presentation is uh, called Student as Traffic Experts. As I told you, they are uh, key to our projects to, uh, to influence um, parents and um, other students. Uh, so I'd like to uh, introduce to you how to uh, promote cycling in, uh, in schools with a user-driven approach. The approach can be used uh, in other areas than, than schools, but we mostly work in school areas. Um, I used to work in the city of, uh, of Copenhagen, uh, where we uh, identified uh, challenges uh, on, on how to uh, promote uh, cycling and, and make uh, the school roads more safe. Uh, firstly, more students are going by, uh, by car. There's, there's a tendency to the problems are getting worse. Uh, and problems are caused by parents' behavior, and this is very hard to address. Um, sometimes the parents are not aware uh, that they are part of the problem, or don't like to realize that they are part of the problem. And also, uh, schools are not likely to take responsibility for traffic. Uh, at least in, in Denmark, uh, the school uh, principals like to, to push this problem uh, to, uh, to engineers, uh, saying this is not our, <clears throat> our problem. And uh, fourth, uh, well, that's uh, secondary to our uh, work, but uh, of course it's important to, to stress that we like to work uh, multidisciplinary and, and work with the, the health issues also. Uh, we uh, designed a method to, uh, to help traffic engineers and planners to target these uh, challenges. Uh, and the idea is to involve students in um, a design process. Uh, and we like to work very holistic with, uh, with the schools because we know that, uh, that the physical infrastructure is important, but we think uh, designing uh, behavior is, uh, is the most important and then uh, physical infrastructure can uh, sort of support the, uh, the behavior. We like to work uh, with co-creation and uh, in this case it's not a buzzword, I don't know how it is in Sweden and Finland, but in Denmark uh, a lot of people use co-creation as a buzzword but don't really uh, co-create uh, and we really co-create with the, with the students as they are really, uh, uh, yeah, the, the one who drives the process. And when uh, they are in the center of the process, they will also um, have uh, ownership. Um, they really like to, to do uh, all kind of stuff to, to make this uh, problem better because they are involved from the start. I mean, uh, and that's why they, they like to act as, uh, as ambassadors for uh, a new behavior or to introduce to a new infrastructure or whatever the uh, solutions are. Uh, this is a campaign set up. When I say campaign, I mean in, in a holistic way. Uh, it's not just uh, communication, it's all kind of activities and uh, also infrastructure. Um, normally we work with uh, 25 students, uh, approximately 11 years old, maybe a bit older. 
um, uh, maybe a student council uh, or uh, just a, a normal class of, uh, of students. Uh, and we call them ambassadors because uh, they are sort of the center. Uh, they are the students who are supposed to influence um, parents and other students. Um, with the ambassadors, we, uh, we designed this campaign and uh, targeted to um, uh, 250 students, just, just approximate uh, the number, depending on the school, uh, but mostly the younger uh, students than, than the ambassadors. Uh, and they are, well, the target group, but also messengers because they bring uh, the message back to uh, their parents uh, as a uh, started out with uh, at the breakfast table or in the car, telling the parents what to do because they got this message from the ambassadors. And this is just a, a short um, description of the process. Uh, but it's, it's very important for us to ensure uh, ownership. And uh, that's why the students are in the, in the project from the beginning. Uh, and the, big, the beginning is for us mapping problems um, and um, and that's where the project start in, in the first workshop. Uh, the second workshop, uh, we do a lot of homework in between these workshops. Uh, the second workshop is uh, developing new ideas. Uh, and this is a, a photo of a, a student idea. After the second workshop, we have even more uh, homework to do, uh, contacting uh, authorities to make sure our uh, uh, project is is uh, is all right for them getting the right approvals maybe contacting police uh, as they are giving approvals in in Denmark and it's very important again that the uh, students um, is involved in this part of the process and um, has to give them ownership and um, we kick it off in a campaign uh, in an event uh, we have a corona friendly uh, event these days um, but uh, well kicking off all uh, activities at the same time is uh, is our uh, well it's important for us because uh, it have uh, most value we think so i'm going to give you a few uh, examples um, this is a school in uh, Odense uh, where we um, well did this pro process as I as I sketched for you, uh, but now I'm going to focus on the physical infrastructure. Uh, when we build this uh, physical infrastructure, it's very important for us that it's um, supporting uh, behavior, a behavior design designed with the students. Uh, in this case, we designed. Uh, um, a cycle path uh, both ways. Uh, for 10 years the school had been uh, uh, trying to get a, a cycle track outside the road. Um, but it's very expensive. Uh, in, in our uh, project we normally have uh, a small amount to build uh, temporary uh, infrastructure and that's the top picture. You see the temporary cycle track. Um, and we had uh, a lot of success with this um, project, uh, uh, counting uh, before and after, sh showing that 56% uh, were going by bike. Uh, and uh, because we had this uh, big uh, success, the municipality decided to build this uh, infrastructure um, on the road instead of beside the road, and it made it even more uh, uh, inexpensive. So just a saving money experiment, building a cycle track from ground beside the road would cost approximately 100,000 euro. Uh, and a cycle track on the road um, is it's, it's far uh, less expensive. So uh, the municipality saved uh, 70,000 euro. Uh, and actually this idea was the students and they uh, supported it with uh, all kinds of campaigns and activities. 
Uh, this is a case from another school. Uh, well, students have in-depth knowledge of uh, their own environment. They know the environment in uh, all times of year and, um, and will all, all kind of, uh, uh, well, uh, if it's light or if it's dark or if it's rainy or however it is, they all know it. And in a, in a group of uh, students of 25, they will have a, a, well, a good uh, cover of the whole school district. In this case, they knew that there was uh, a good solution, but if you had to put this solution, you had to uh, uh, separate this path. Uh, so already from uh, the beginning, they told us if we uh, are going to put all students uh, in, in this direction, we need to separate the road. Um, and that's the, the path. It's sort of a shortcut to the school. Uh, some students use it before, but normally all students went another way around the school where all the car came. Uh, so it's quite obvious, but sometimes uh, students can point out uh, the obvious uh, solution. In this case, uh, uh, the teacher we uh, work with, uh, who was in charge of, uh, of traffic, she told them that she uh, didn't see so much uh, students going by, uh, by foot, by bicycle. And well, you can see the figures, um, uh, a big uh, increase in, in students put by car. And on the pavement, you see, uh, well, how to separate in a temporary way. And you can, uh, well, support this after the project with the more permanent uh, markings. In this case, we had the opportunity to work with, a, with an artist. And uh, it's, well, maybe a bit far from uh, traffic safety, but uh, it, uh, if it works, well, it works. Uh, in this case, we did the storytelling and, uh, and, and made, uh, well, a universe of uh, safe traffic to make all the students go uh, in the right way instead of on the other side of the school. Uh, and well, most important, uh, promoting this uh, path uh, to all other students is very important. Going to all the classes and telling this uh, the story about this green path, as as they call this uh, this school road, to to make everyone uh, do what we uh, like them to do. And this is uh, yet uh, a third school, um, but similar to uh, the first one, we, uh, we built uh, a temporary cycle track uh, and marking on a, one, on a one way road. Normally uh, students are not, not supposed to go in this, uh, this way, they have to go, uh, well, another way where all the, the, the cars, going into the school, but many students like to go in this way uh, against uh, the one-way uh, restriction, um, but they were actually not allowed to, so there was a big of a, uh, dilemma. Uh, we tried to, to make this as a temporary uh, solution, um, and now the municipality is going to put it in as a, a temporary um, on, on the same school, uh, we had this uh, student idea to, uh, to make a, a kiss and drive, and they had a really good idea of how to put it in, uh, where the buses are, are, are putting off uh, students in the morning, but it wasn't, it, uh, well, it couldn't, uh, it couldn't work out. So instead, we did this uh, temporary kiss and drive on the uh, parking spots. Uh, so it's uh, sort of a shared space. Uh, and actually it worked out really good, but uh, well, try to guess why. The students uh, are promoting the idea. So you see these two guys, they are from the uh, student council telling all these uh, guys and well, I think it's third grade, uh, but all the students from uh, uh, the small uh, classes, they attended uh, this tour, guided tour, 
uh, done by the um, um, student council telling them how to use this uh, physical infrastructure because well it would be a, a chaos if you uh, just wrote a message on uh, well to the to the parents they they wouldn't really get it and some of them uh, well they just maybe didn't care but the students they really like to inform their parents how to use infrastructure the right way and uh, well this is my last slide uh, we have had really good effects on uh, a short term uh, so recently uh, we have been focusing a lot of um, maintaining behavior uh, which is of course very important uh, in schools there will always be new parents and they have to to see uh, uh, very instantly how to uh, um, well to adapt to this behavior uh, that is so important to maintain traffic safety and we work with the traffic policy uh, maybe in other countries it's called the uh, i think school plans or traffic plans what we do after the project we uh, do a lot of uh, surveys um, with uh, parents and other uh, students and then we go to uh, a school board meeting to uh, present uh, some recommendation for future action to uh, uh, to give the, the school the chance to put it in a traffic policy is a good way to uh, maintain the good behavior because then you can decide if you're going to uh, repeat a certain, uh, a certain campaign or activity maybe once a year, twice a year. And then of course, it's very important to, uh, to uh, support uh, behavior with the permanent infrastructure um, because it's, well, it's, it's very intuitive to, uh, if it's the right uh, permanent infrastructure. Uh, well, thanks for listening. Uh, is there a few minutes for questions? Yeah, I think we have a few, uh, we can take a, a minute or so for a few questions that have popped up here in the chat. Thank you for your presentation, Johan. Uh, we have a question here from um, Batil Alin. He's asking if, um, Johan, you can give us any examples of challenges that traffic engineers see in these situations, working with uh, kids getting to school by bike or walking. Well, I guess they see uh, normally the same challenges as the as the, the students um, because uh, I think it's normally the parents that don't see uh, the the problems uh, the engineers I work with they they know that the parents and the behavior is a problem so uh, but still they are there's some kind of uh, of power involved uh, that so many people like to have uh, infrastructure uh, and as fast as as possible um well was that the part of the, the answer i think i think so yeah um we have a question here also of uh, how is this work funded i believe you're a social enterprise right mm -hmm. well as a social enterprise i uh, i work as a company selling uh, products or services uh, so in that way, I'm a, I'm a work as a company, but um, well, engineers from uh, municipalities, they, they pay for this service because they can see the point in, uh, in, uh, in well, designing behavior and, and supporting with the infrastructure. But well, I, as a social enterprise, I have the, the greater opportunity to, uh, to well, get private funds. Uh, so, uh, well, that's, that's part of it as uh, de developing new ideas. And working with the innovation as a social enterprise. Super mm -hmm. interesting. Maybe you can share the link to your website in the chat here, Johan. Yeah, sure. Um, and also thank you to Laura for adding your own example uh, here to working with children's uh, transport to schools. Uh, thank you, Johan. We will move on to uh, Celia now. Um, 
And Celia, I believe you also have uh, some Mentimeters here that we're going to do before we get your presentation going. Let me get those up here again. Okay, so we will switch uh, to involving seniors in uh, cycling and other green forms of mobility. And your first question, Celia, is have you used participatory methods in your work? So everybody, if you still have your tab or your phone open to menti.com, if you've been logged out, the code is here at the top, 90357. Okay, we have some answers rolling in here. Give it a minute. <laughs> it looks like maybe half of the people answering have used participatory methods in their work somehow, Celia, so. Yeah, this looks interesting. I, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the answer of knows and don't knows is more than I maybe expected. So it's very good, <laughs> good that I will be talking about it also. And, yep, exactly. Yeah. And we'll cruise on to our next question then. We have, um, this works. Um, if, oh, now we skip the question. And then what participatory methods have you used in your work for those of you who have used participatory methods? And um, what kinds of methods are there? So yeah, if you're just gonna give us a bit of a, examples. Mm, well, it can be quite basic, like uh, workshops or even like questionnaires, or then it can be more like a mobility lab or ICT tools street talk or there are so many methods so i think that those who answer don't know maybe have might have used them yeah so we have some questions some answers popping in here workshops workshops is a uh, dialogue online participation street interviews street walks maybe a similar uh, public meetings questionnaires these uh, we have workshops is quite quite a big one. There is that something that you mm -hmm. work with a lot as well. Oh. Great, so yeah, quite, looks good. quite a few different ones. Bike here. kitchen is interesting. And maybe Thank some you. of these will tie into your presentation here, focus groups as well. Yes. And now I think mostly it's been online lately. Yeah, for a lot of people mm. try having to learn new digital tools mm. like, like Nerdy and Zoom. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's do uh, your last question here before we uh, get started with your presentation. Have you involved seniors in planning or projects? One person managed to fill this out while I accidentally scrolled ahead before. <laughs> before. So seniors, from what age do we, age group are we calling seniors? Well, we have defined it uh, like uh, in, in Turku with our project, it's 60, 65 plus. So, so about from retirement. Age, yes. Or what is currently retirement? Age. Yes. Yes. But of okay. course, it can be defined in each cities or. But usually, I think it's sixty-five. Hmm. So quite a few participants have yes. been working with seniors. So and a few have not uh, or don't know. So I think you. There will be interesting perspectives uh, for your presentation to tie into here, Celia. Okay, uh, thank go you. Go ahead. Yes, I will share. Here. How can I get this? Okay, so you can see. Yes. Yes. So uh, I'm Silja Gobese, project specialist from Wallonia Regional Council of Southwest Finland. And um, we are working with our municipalities of Southwest Finland to reach their sustainable development and climate goals. 
and I will talk about how to involve senior users and increase their share on city bikes. And we are doing this work as part of the Green Sam Green Silver Age Mobility Project, which is funded by the Interreg Baltic Sea Region Program. And the partners in the project are the Free and Hanseatic City of Hamburg, us, Turku University of Applied Sciences, City of Aarhus, Municipality of Dansk, Tartu City Government, City of Riga, and the Institute of Baltic Studies. And there is the link for our website where you can read more about our project. And uh, our um, our target group in the project is the decision makers, city and traffic planners, and our user group is the seniors. So as the cities are planning more green mobility solutions, we are working with this, how to, how to in our aging societies, how do we make the bicycle sharing systems and this uh, other green solutions and public transport systems more age friendly? How do we design public spaces in a way that seniors feel more confident with green mobility modes? And this will help us to increase the share of the senior users as we get the results from, from involving the seniors. And uh, in the project, we have created this this atlas, uh, which is this atlas on participative approaches to age-friendly green mobility. And uh, it's still not finished, so it will be published later, later the final version. And also we've been creating this toolbox of participatory methods, uh, how to induce be behavior change among the user group the seniors and how to help the public authorities to gain structured knowledge on the user needs and how to increase the needs driven decision making in urban mobility planning and by uh, developing and testing these tools in each of the partner city we have been piloting these different um, different tools so then the the aim is to by this, these tools to have more senior users in these, in these, um, our mobility, mobility modes. And uh, then Valonia and Feli, we have been piloting this uh, mentoring model in Turku region. So this is the participatory method or tool which we have been mentoring, uh, <laughs> piloting. And uh, we have been doing this work together with the Turku Region Public Transport, Föli, who have um, buses as well as the city bikes in their system. And our aim with this pilot is to increase senior share of public transportation by behavior change, learning from each other, learning from peers, and then also youth uh, mentoring the seniors and and by this we are, uh, we aim to encourage seniors to try the new services for example the city bikes and give feedback from the services so then at the same time we can plan them more age friendly and uh, the first part of this this uh, pilot was peer coaching trial last year, we had uh, active public transport uh, senior users and we had uh, non-active public transport uh, senior users. So we had this group of 22 seniors, which is 11 pairs. And they got, uh, they each got these 30 days travel cards and they used the buses um, together the mentor and the mentee. And also we, we organized these uh, digital clinics where the, 
for example, the fully application and, and root uh, search and other digital services were introduced and discussed and learned together. And then this group were, were pretty much uh, using the buses together and learning a lot from each other. And then about these city bikes. Uh, so then this year we we held this city bike trial where we had youth and seniors trying these city bikes together. And we had three small groups. Each group had two youngsters and two or three seniors and one physiotherapist. And then it was the same idea that this, each person got their 30 day travel cards and then then they learn to to registrate the bike, to use the bike, return the bike, and then we collected feedback from the seniors by interviewing and questionnaires and and discussions. And here you can see our city bikes. And also a big part of this trial, city bike trial, was. Um, the youth were kind of fully ambassadors. They created content to fully social media channels about the senior experiences with city bikes. They were taking pictures, videos, and they updated this fully social media. They held competitions on Instagram, Facebook. They interviewed the seniors and they the, the aim was to make visible this um, this work and the, the give the senior the voice to tell about their experiences with the city bikes. And so what did we learn from the trial? Uh, this was of course very like a small small group but we had um, partly we had or actually mostly yes we had the same seniors in our first um, public transportation trial, the peer coaching trial, as we had then, then in this city bike trial. So we have very good, um, we know the seniors, we have been very, like it, it, it can be very much discussed, uh, the, a lot of their feedback and, and they, they have become familiar, familiar to us. And, and, um, so it's we get good feedback from them, uh, and we could see that the the this and the seniors told us and and that the trial inspired the seniors a lot. After the trial and during the, during the trial, they were very enthusiastic to enthusiastic to bike again after trying the city bikes together in a small group, because some of them had not. Um, uh, all of them had not um, tested the bikes before. Some had some time since they had biked. They didn't have own bikes anymore. Um, there was only one one person who was a little bit um, unsure whether she can join the trial because she had had um, uh, operation in her leg. And then our physiotherapist tried to help her to bike again. And then, then it happened that she was not able to bike without assistance. And, and then, but then she, she, she told that she will now start practicing more these like um, her, her leg uh, so that she will be ready to bike next summer. So all the seniors plan to continue the use of city bikes after the trial. And one said that, oh, I want to buy a bike, my own bike again. He got very excited about biking. So we noticed that this mentoring helped the seniors to register, try and learn to use the bikes. Without the mentoring, they would have not um, even registered. It. Some said that they had tried to register it once, but um, but then they somehow didn't succeed in registration or something there was difficulties so definitely they needed help in all this 
and then um, some of the technical parts of the bikes the seniors found the city bikes quite heavy and the front basket caused difficulties in balance so we can definitely say that the city bikes are not suitable for everyone and at the same time we have to remember that our seniors are from age 65 to 90 something so even there is a big gap of age gap so so we are maybe trying here those who are able to cycle we we want to encourage them to try the city bikes and use them and they told us that it's they found it very very useful way to travel in the city and um and then physiotherapists combined these hints how to ride the city bikes with ease and then they also combined bind hints for seniors how, how to exercise balance and strength so these physical exercise to help to the bike and also to recover from biking and these are now also in our public transportation fairly page in in Finnish Swedish and English and then uh, what else that during during the 30 days seniors found and learned new city bike stations and explored the city so it happened also in the peer coaching trial that the seniors took the buses everywhere like they started to just take the bus around just to for fun and, and social uh, like gathering and meeting and seeing places so even with the bike they 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 found new new places in the city and bike stations and then some seniors learn to search the bike stations in the Furley application, so which helps to use them. And then uh, the city bike system has only at the moment 10 electric bikes, but we organized a separate um, like a trip with this uh, rental who rents uh, uh, rents electric bikes. So we we organized a separate two hour trip and the seniors just loved this, the electric bikes and they said that they noticed that when they have not been able to bike anymore they have not used their own bike anymore but with the electric bike they could easily easily um, bike even longer years like maybe five or ten years more than they would without the electric bike so it it is a very um good point to for the cities and um, the, those who work with seniors to try to increase the share of uh, increase the electric bikes in the in the city for seniors to use i think that is something interesting uh okay there i think is my presentation great thank you so thank much Celia. Thank Super you. interesting to hear about your trial and the results. Uh, we have one question here from Kevin. Uh, who, do you know who the manufacturer or what the make of the city bikes that's used is? Uh, it's the Polis Next Bike. Okay. Hmm? For both the electric and the, the regular ones. Yeah, I think. Yes, yes. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Celia, for your presentation. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> okay. We're just running a little bit behind the oh, schedule, oh, sorry. so I think yes. that's why we Thank have you. to cruise along here to, to Bjorn. But if you have questions for Celia, please do write them in the chat and maybe Celia can answer, answer there as well. Uh, so Bjorn, let's see, you also had some Mentimeter questions here for our participants. Uh, right. Let's see if I can get those up here. And you're on mute now, Bjorn. Can we hear you? So you have to unmute on your on your phone there. So there, now we can hear. perfect. Okay, so for let's get everybody up on Menti again. Um, 
Um, Bjorn, your question for our participants is, um, in your opinion, are there any obstacles for prioritizing walking, cycling, and motorized vehicles equally in urban planning? Um, yes, no. I, I, did, I didn't, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of responses coming in here that yes, there are obstacles for prioritizing them equally in urban planning. A vast majority think that there are obstacles here. Is this a surprising result to you, Bjorn, or? Um, no. No. Okay, let's see our, our next question here. Um, we have, um, oh, we skipped ahead one, I'm double clicking. Uh, should there be requirements for the design of cycling infrastructure like there is for car infrastructure? So most places will have very strict requirements for designing roads and streets for motorized vehicles. Should there be equal uh, requirements and standards for designing cycle infrastructure? Yes, no, don't know are the options here. All right, so far we have a unanimous yes. What do you think, Bjorn? Uh, there, there shouldn't be any problem to, to, to do it because everyone is uh, uh, like the ID. But as normal, uh, everyone likes the ID is not similar to making, the, making it. So let's hope. Yep. So sometimes there's some differences that there might be between the idea and what actually happens in reality. Right. Let's see, your last question here is, um, do cycle paths need standards for road signs like there are for car roads? So should cycle paths be signed in a similar way, um, in a standardized way, just like car roads are? Yes, no, don't know. Yeah, it's about the same. Yep, Everyone so. is like the ID. And uh, it, it's better to have one kind of signs and not two. One for, for bicycles and one for cars. Uh, it's much easier for everyone if they know what sign says. Exactly. So again here, everybody is is into the the idea of it and then I think you will be telling us a bit about what um, reality actually looks like out on the cycle roads. Yes. So please go ahead Bjorn with your presentation. Okay, I'm going to start this uh, share screen. And what button is that now? The, the green one there. The green one, yeah, that, there it is. And uh, station seven minutes. There it is. And share. Is that the right one? You are the expert. You can just make it full screen for us. Um, the build spiel. Behind my yep. mobile build spiel. But links to them today. Yeah. From the beginning, like that. Everything perfect? It's my age. Um, well, I'm, my name is Bjorn Willung and I'm 69 years old. Two children, two grandchildren, former journalist. I e-cycle e about 4,000 kilometers a year everywhere I want to go. So uh, I'm a diabetic, so it's, re it's really important for me to uh, exercise. And uh, when I go to the, to the grocery store, I'm, I'm not exercising, but it is exercising as well. So I'm working for better security and accessibility and directness on bike paths. And of course, more people will, uh, to, to start on biking. And if you see at, at the map, 
20 kilometers north, south, east, west. It's a huge area. So, um, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to mm, oh. uh, move that because you are in my text. <laughs> Like that. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm transporting myself uh, e everywhere, and uh, I transport everything I need from groceries to parcels, and I bike together with other people. It's really nice. Uh, I can't change. Uh, What's up now? It stopped. No, here it comes again. Uh, clearing a path for people with special needs. Well, clear the path for everyone if you do it for, for those with special needs. And uh, a simple solution is the hardest to find, I used to say, but all of us have a disability, include, uh, I have to change that. Um, all of us have a, a disability, uh, uh, and it's clued and not exclude. And that's what I would like to say. Uh, this is uh, 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 in the winter time and the sweep sorting, and it can't stop me as it just going to summer psychopath. Uh, cycling uh, when you do it in the right way. In the lower uh, picture here, you can see the difference between sweep sorting and only flow and sand. Uh, flow and sand, it's hard with a, with a arm bike to to uh, to come through. And it's uh, better for public health: sleep, diabetes, overweight. Cardiovascular endorphins produce uh, uh, reduce pain and uh, less. Uh, it's a reduction of medication and future surgeries. So it's just positive. Uh, but why so few arm cyclists? Well, most counties in Sweden says the arm cycling uh, offer leisure, and uh, then you had to pay for it yourself. Free aids now for those who can't walk. And that's a surprisingly way to put it. Uh, I don't agree. Uh, Eon cycle is a transport aid to work, school, friends, grocery stores, and for leisure, of course. And it replaces travel services and transport service, taxi and own car. And the picture is from Amsterdam. It's a perfect city to, to bike in. And here are some different cycles. And according to my calculations, so total profit, if uh, uh, the counties should uh, take care of, of this as, as a free um, possibility. So total profit for them, if I take these yellow uh, figures, and I do uh, 4,000 kilometers a year, so the profit will be about 8,000 euros the first year. Second year, the, the bike is already uh, bought. So uh, it, it's a good uh, uh, business for, for everyone, benefits for all. And here's some. Great pictures from from Hammarby Sjöstad and the uh, grocery. <laughs> it's a lot. And uh, we're planning infrastructure, so I would say draw bike lanes, sidewalks, streets, all at the same time. Uh, draw them straight, wide, interconnected and without obstacles. And make it total uh, accessibility for wheelchairs, arm and cargo bikes. Children are elderly, of course, from the start. It's, uh, it would work for all. 
and uh, this says a lot from the few who use bad uh, infrastructure and fewer people are excluded if you make it good. Obstacles. Some dangers. And uh, when you make a, a street first and, and uh, put uh, bike lanes or, or bike paths afterwards, then you got the uh, lamppost uh, signals in, in, in the bike infrastructure. So that's why I want everything to be drawn at the same time. This is a normal situation. It's forbidden in Stockholm at least and uh, the traffic office demands to have them airborne but uh, entrepreneurs don't follow it all the time and this is Hammarby Sjöstad it's uh, the environmental mainly plan for walking site in buses and trams and uh, it's a kind of laziness I used to call it when they just to park in the bike lanes and don't use the parking spots. And this is the same. And the um, law says pedestrian street should be firm, even, and non slip. And uh, it should be here, but isn't. So laws in, on ain't always followed. And this is from the same, this is the area where I live. And uh, it's a lot of this stones everywhere. And uh, from the UN 22 standard rules, they say, uh, let's move that one. Uh, they say that uh, environment that is good for people with disabilities is also good for everyone else. And uh, it's really true. And this is a, a nice fast up to the sidewalk. But on the other side, it's a step. So design and function, it's very important. And this is uh, a bridge, a fundamental bridge. So in, invisible, invisible in, in rain, darkness, and absent mindless for security reasons. So they put a, a, a white line and a sign. But uh, blind people, they can't see it. And it's also dangerous for cyclists. Uh, Video and email and meetings. Uh, I've done some results, and uh, this is one. Uh, two new manuals from uh, the traffic office. So uh, perhaps the next time they build anything, they will use it because they don't. Uh, they don't use uh, a, a lot of manuals that that they have. Uh, for bikes, for, for pedestrians, and now this. So let's hope. And uh, this uh, barrier it doesn't look uh, dangerous from distance, but when you come closer, you, you really see it, but then it's too late. So uh, this barrier was taken away 10 months after they have built it. So sometimes traffic office is acting quickly. And uh, this is uh, an email uh, to the post node Supreme boss I sent. And uh, a week later, they were all gone, those post node cars. And uh, surprisingly, even Bring and other companies. And uh, unfortunately, a driver lost his work because he said his bosses told them to to it was okay to to stay in in bike lanes and uh Thomas me here to the one of the big uh, the biggest money paper they 
have wrote about it on illegal parking in cycle lanes jeopardize safety. It's in this example. And uh, here's some more uh, from the beginning. It was, uh, uh, if you can see this, uh, people, pedestrians come this way and they're going down here and uh, it ends up the pedestrian part and uh, they are crossing here and crossing uh, the cycle path and follow up here. But, uh, I have an idea that maybe we should have the, um, the change earlier up on the hill, up here, and then we are here. So here's a new change from the bus station. They just follow here and they come down, come down here and into the tunnel. And the green asphalt, I, I don't know if it looks not too well, I think, but uh, it, it's a uh, uh, huge, um, uh, much better now. And uh, here is almost two, two kilometers uh, with the uh, uh, paving stones was replaced with, replaced with tiles. And uh, from that moment, uh, people choose uh, uh, the pedestrian uh, path and not the uh, cycle path. So uh, this is which was a really nice change. And uh, this is uh, at home where I live. So before, uh, bikes was coming up this way and turn right uh, and uh, on, on the sidewalk. But uh, they should go out here and uh, uh, into the uh, psychic path. But uh, it was an edge here, so they took it away, lowered it, and uh, now you can go right into the cycle path, uh, cycle lane, instead of follow this red line, and then you were out in the middle of the street before you can turn in to the cycle uh, lane. So it's easier for everyone and, and more uh, secure also so small details and uh, a GoPro, GoPro camera that's perfect when you uh, want to film this and put it out and talk to the traffic office or politicians and everything so that's what I'm doing okay uh, Amelia you can uh, put on the video now and uh, if they want to have some contact information, here it is. Okay. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Björn. Um, you have a video um, about cycling uh, around in Stockholm that you'd like to share. So I'll put that on. If anybody has uh, questions for Björn, you can type them in the chat. Um, it's a short video and we're running a little over time. So we understand if some of you have to leave, the recording will be available and all the materials uh, afterwards. So, let's see here. All right, here we go. Bicycles, cyclists can look different in many ways. An electric arm bike is a transport aid quickly connected to the wheelchair. The arm bike means freedom and a workout. Ja, det är jävligt bra faktiskt. Ja, det är det. Är det något som du bara kan skjuta på av det där? Ja, precis. Inom tio sekunder sådär. Okej. Okay. I usually ride my arm bike because I'm too lazy to go by car. And I'm faster than cars in your city. I don't want to contribute to traffic jams and air pollution. I need exercise like everyone else. The region of Stockholm says arm bikes are for leisure. You have to pay for it yourself. My point of view, arm bikes are for transport of yourself, food, houses, everything.
And from the middle of Stockholm, the green area shows how far away you can come in 30 minutes. And this is the train to Nynäshavn and the ferry to Visby, Gotland. And here are some other cities that we have been to, me and my wife. The arm bike improves the odds. Arm cycling should be an obvious choice of transport for everyone who wants and can cycle. Great. It's a very, really nice video, um, Bjorn. Um, mm, thank you. What would, um, as, a, as a question here before we wrap up, you had a lot of information about how you've been in touch with the traffic office to try and get changes through um, mm. from how you, issues that you see of the infrastructure. What would your tips be to other people who want to um, impact the infrastructure in their own city maybe and get in touch with the, the municipality? Yeah, uh, and not, not only talk about uh, Cycling. Uh, I mean, it, it, traffic is uh, includes uh, vehicles, uh, motor vehicles, and if it don't work for them, it don't work for for uh, cyclists, and it also has to work for pedestrians. So it, you have to mix it together. And when you have a a good idea and mix together, then the traffic office or uh, it's a better chance to. Uh, to have them listening. Yeah, great. Thank you for, for sharing your experiences with us Bjorn and also Celia and, uh, and Johan. Thank you so much to our presenters. And uh, thank you also to all our participants for joining us today. Um, this is the last webinar of the, the HEAT project and the HEAT project is wrapping up here at the end of the year. So thank you so much for joining us uh, for these activities. We have a new uh, handbook on participatory urban planning that's published on, on our website um, that you can find there with some of our experiences from the activities in the project. It will be translated into uh, Estonian, Latvian, Swedish, Finnish also in the coming weeks and will appear there as well as some other materials that's um, for hopefully going to be useful to the people who see it for working with participatory urban planning. Uh, so please check that out. And um, from the whole Heat Project team, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you a, uh, a happy new year and uh, hope to see you again sometime in the future. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.